Hi, I'm Stephen Budden. I just wanted to talk for a minute about uh, these negative emotions and where they come from. Now, there's no emotion that necessarily arises out of the blue. These come from somewhere. And the important thing to note is that we don't always need to know where those come from. We just need to know how to manage them when they arise. So this is really important because there's all kinds of systems to analyze the subtleties of where they come from. Sometimes acknowledging the source can help support in alleviating the symptom. However, not all the time. One thing I do when <laughs> mind chatter comes in is I say thank you for sharing. If you jump in and start wrestling with the mind chatter, you're going to lose. Because it's almost like if you push against something, it gets stronger, and you push and it gets stronger. The way to defeat this arch villain is to let it pierce you through the heart, <laughs> as I've said before. So let these things come through like waves, like waves against the beach, like, like you're a blade of grass and there's wind passing through, passing through without attachment. Now, it's not this negative emotion that causes the challenges in our lives. It's, it's the attachment to it or the reaction to it. So sometimes there'll be a thought and it's like, okay, that was a weird thought. And then it's coupled with, how could you have that thought? You're still not over this stuff. Like, how could you let yourself think this way? And then there's all this judgment on top of whatever this thing was. Whereas what if it just passed like wind through your, through your body, right? Through your reality, through your experience, what would have happened then? So I like this. Thank you for sharing. For one thing, this releases some attachment. And for another thing, it turns around the response to an automatic one of gratitude, right? And, and for a third, it acknowledges the source is separate from yourself. Like, how could I have these thoughts? That's not the question. You don't have these thoughts necessarily. They could arise out of a aberration in your being, out of a uh, emotional residue from some past event, out of some biochemical imbalance, out of some like energetic attachment. T.C. Lethbridge, he was doing some studies and he was walking along a beach and he felt this like sudden wave of sadness and and his wife walked by and felt the same thing. They found out that someone had died there by the beach and there was like this energy in the air. I think you probably know what I mean. And they, they did all these studies and found that water could kind of hold this energy. And you know, we are mostly water. The human organism is powerful because it can transmute this water into like the cleanest source of water. So we transmute dead, charged, <laughs> like dead water into living water. However, doing this takes a lot of our life force. So intaking living water is, is much more powerful and productive. The point is that of that is if, if you think that we're water and there's water all around and there's most living things are mostly water and then there's other elements and everything's kind of emanating, you're, if you're sensitive at all, you're going to be getting a lot of these frequencies coming in. That's that's what we associate with these emotions and these these emotions linked to just sometimes just feelings or premonitions or whatever you want to call them. So thank you for sharing. And sometimes I have suggest clients rename their mental chatter. I had someone who had di had diagnosed like 32 voices that, that came from their history and they made a little map that drew the lines and they have different tones in the voices and they could kind of distinguish that way, which was which. That's not what I'm doing here necessarily. I think that might be too much. At first, you might want to try this first step. And then if that doesn't work, do something else. I've called my mind chatter, the mind chatter. It's like, if it's not mine, it's the, right? If it's mine, it's an attachment. I own it. It's mine. Whenever you say something is mine, that's a serious thing because you're adopting it as part of your identity. These thoughts, again, they're passing through. They're not part of your identity. So the mind chatter instead of my mind chatter. That's one step. Another step is to give it a name, something like, I would always call mine Fragonard. Like, she's not home. She's out. She's attracted to someone else. She's out right now with them. I'm sure of it. Thank you, Fragonard. Fragonard's just a funny name that allows me to release. Someone called their strawberry shortcake because they kept having a voice that said, like, you can't do that. You can't do that. Thank you, strawberry shortcake. Thank you for sharing, right? You don't have to say, I can so do that. Because it's like if you get in an argument with a toddler, does it make it better? No. You have to kind of acknowledge the need and then that, that thing passes in the toddler, you kind of, you find a way into the dance and you, you, you meet their need. 
And with the mind chatter, it's just like, it's a non-attachment thing. And your you're, gratitude is like protection against fear and against reaction. So this thank you for sharing is very powerful. Thank you for sharing strawberry shortcake or Fragonard, whatever your name is, make sure it's not too serious. That's, that's even more powerful because it can break you out of the trance of like, oh, this is a serious voice that I've, I've really known over the years. It's like a poltergeist or it's like Voldemort. Not really. <laughs> you have power over it once you start to lighten its, lighten its grip on you. So I hope that helps. I'll see you again soon.